things that you may not think are involved, like your lower back or your knee. So we're going to go through some of those things today. First, I just want to give you a little bit of background about our clinic. Once again, it's with Cornerstone Physical Therapy. My name is Jessica Tripp. I'm the clinical director at our Woodfin North Asheville location. We have three clinics currently operating our, our South Asheville location in Arden and our Woodfin location in North Asheville. Our East Asheville location is not open at this time, but we're hoping to open that within the next couple months in the future, depending on how things go and progress with all of the coronavirus issues going around. But we are open and operating at two of our clinics and we are seeing patients. We are all wearing masks to help everybody feel safe with the new Buncombe County order that's gone through. A couple of the things that I want to talk about that we treat within our clinic and our subspecialties are orthopedics, which is what hip pain is going to fall under. Anything dealing with the neck, the shoulder, the back, the knee or the ankle that is either pre or post surgery, an injury you may have ran into doing weightlifting, running, walking, any of that is going to fall under the realm of orthopedics. Pelvic health. We have some therapists that specialize in this area, and what that is going to address is any issues with pelvic pain, urinary or fecal incontinence, constipation, pre- and postpartum care. So if any of those things are something that you didn't know physical therapy could treat, we do have therapists that will help you address any issues you may be having in that area. TMJ, which stands for temporomandibular joint, your jaw and facial pain. We have two therapists that specialize in this area and they help patients with anything in regards to chewing, eating, any type of pain you might have after a prolonged dental procedure, along with working into the neck and things in the head. So if you're running into any pain with that, we have some therapists that can help you. CrossFit and weightlifting. Myself, um, the owner of the clinic, Dr. Fabrio and Dr. Grady, we all treat injuries that weightlifters may run into, crossfitters. A lot of people are doing more workouts at home right now since in phase two, the gyms are unable to reopen. So if you're running into any issues with that, Dr. Grady is in our south location along with Dr. Fabrio, and I'm in our north location. We can help you tease out some things that are going on with your lifting. You may be experiencing some hip pain because you've been doing more air squats or lunges or something like that. Lymphedema is a, another word for swelling. We have therapists that specialize in this area. And a lot of times swelling may occur pre or post-surgical after a mastectomy. Or there may be other things going on in your body that are causing the swelling. So with an evaluation, they can look at that. They can give you some recommendations on wrapping or compression and get you in a plan of care to where you don't have to be dealing with that all the time. Massage therapy. We were just able to bring our massage therapist back into the clinic in phase two. So that's really exciting. So we're now able to offer massages again. A lot of patients have been asking about that. So if that's something that you would like to get set up for, you can give the office a call or you can also comment into the sections as Elisa's monitoring that as we go throughout the PowerPoint. Our website's at the bottom, cornerstoneptnc.com. You can find all the information that you need which office you might want to come to or how to get in contact with us. Let's go ahead and jump into the hip pain. So the hip is also a very cool joint. It provides us a lot of stability, provides us a lot of movement. So as you can see in these pictures, all of these athletes, dancers, yoga um, movements require mobility and stability from the hip. So if you are a weightlifter and you're lifting a lot of weight, the hip needs to be strong yet mobile. With runners, we tend to see more of some stiffness, but then we also see weakness a lot of times in our running population. So we really want to address that with them. Dancers, we need a wide variety of movement, mobility, and stability to be able to perform and hit all those moves that you need to in your dance routines. And then with yoga, we're going to run into a lot of positions that demand the hip to be extremely stretched into internal, external rotation, flexion, extension. As you can see in this picture, she's going to have a lot of mobility in her hips to be able to get into that split motion. So if you fall into any of these categories, or if you don't, you're not doing a lot of exercise right now and your hips are just feeling painful from sitting too long or from you know, having to be at your computer more than what you're used to, We'll talk about that today and some things that you can do to address it. 
a little bit of anatomy for you in regards to the hip. The hip is comprised of the bones, which are your pelvis. You can think of, a lot of people think of their hip bone as at the top of your hip, where they can put their hands. That's actually your pelvis. Your hip bone is going to be more of your greater trochanter, as you can see in this picture, out on the lateral side of your hip. Your sacrum or your tailbone. The coccyx, which is a little bone at the bottom of your tailbone. The acetabulum and the femur, which is the approximation of where your thigh bone comes up and attaches into your pelvis. The muscles that control the hip are our primary movers are your glutes or your butt muscles. Your lateral rotators, your adductors, which pull your leg in towards the other leg, and your iliopsoas or your iliacus and your psoas muscles, which are two different muscles that help you stabilize, flex the hip, also support the lower back. So we'll go into a little bit more detail of how these muscles are involved. The nerves that innervate your hip originate into your lumbar spine, your L2, 3, and 4. So those are the nerves and the areas we want to look at in the lower back, along with some other ones that if you're having any type of nerve pain, if you're, even if you're not having nerve pain, we want to make sure that muscles around this area are not super tight and that you're strong in this area because those nerves are what provide power to the muscles in your hips. Once again, if you have any questions throughout this, shoot Elise um, that question in the comments. We can address it at the end. So proper movement requires a good balance between mobility and stability. So we see the extremes of both of these in physical therapy. We see some people that have a lot of mobility or movement in their joints. And then we see a lot of people that are really stiff. They have stability and they're lacking that mobility. So we have to find somewhere in between. Every person's going to be a little bit different on where that balance happens. And it's kind of a gray area in some people. You might start stretching a little bit more and then you realize you're getting weaker. So you need to increase that stability. Or all you're doing is a lot of strength training and you're not doing any accessory mobility work. So we have to find that area in between to help you feel the most comfortable and the most efficient with your workouts and your movements, which could even just be squatting down into a chair, climbing upstairs, getting in and out of bed are things that you also want to think about. We'll go through some common hip injuries that we normally see in the physical therapy clinic. These are not a whole list of everything that could happen at the hip, but some of the most prevalent ones that we see and treat on a regular basis. You can see the list there, and we're going to go through slides on each one and kind of what they mean, what the signs and symptoms are that you may be feeling if you have or think you may have this type of diagnosis. Keep in mind, you don't always have to go to your doctor to get one of these diagnoses. Physical therapy evaluation can rule in, rule out some special tests for the hip impingement, a labral tear. Imaging is helpful with some of these things that can help guide your treatment a little bit more. So just some things to think about as we go through some hip injuries. The first one we want to talk about is hip impingement. There's two different kinds of impingements, as you can see in this picture, a pincer and a cam impingement. And it just depends on where that impingement is coming from. In most cases, this is non-surgical and it responds really well to physical therapy. Some signs and symptoms that you may feel with hip impingement is a sharp catch, a limitation in your range of motion in certain directions, like if you wanted to try to pull your leg out to the side, or if you go to bend your knee up towards your chest, Something might feel like it's getting in the way. With this, we also may see some weakness in those muscles that we talked about, maybe in the adductors or into the glutes or even into the core and lower back. A lot of our patients with hip impingement are going to fall in that little bit higher age range. In the like 40s, 50s, 60s is where we start seeing it. It becomes a little more prevalent as we kind of tighten up and get stiff throughout our lifetime and we stop doing all the things that we maybe used to be doing. Osteoarthritis, uh, this is just an x-ray of kind of where this may occur. So in the hip joint, you can see with a normal hip joint, it's really smooth. There's a good articular surface. Nothing's going to kind of get in the way or cause any pain or pinching. And then in the other picture, you can see that the joint space is not as big, which is going to cause some discomfort. There's some exposed bone and that cartilage starts to wear away. You're going to see this a little bit more in men than women. 
with the hip and it increases with age. So most of us are familiar with arthritis and kind of what that means. A lot of times how it's going to present is you're going to feel a little bit stiffer in the morning. As you move around, things are going to feel a little bit better. You're going to loosen up. And then as the day goes on, you might hit a time period where you start to feel a little bit more achy. Things start to feel not as um, lubricated or moving as well as you did in that like earlier part of the day. That's a very typical presentation of arthritis. Arthritis typically likes warm temperatures better. That's where a lot of people probably move to Florida so that they feel a little bit better as they get older because these cold mountain weather temperatures, a lot of people with arthritis will say that they feel it in their joints. They feel a little bit stiffer. And especially with the hip, that might start impacting how much you want to walk, how much you want to do. So those are some things to keep in mind. If you're dealing with some arthritis in the hip, a moist heat pack may help alleviate some of those symptoms along with a physical therapy evaluation. Some people might think, well, What's physical therapy going to do for arthritis? We can't take the arthritis away, but what we want to assess is how limited is the joint that has the arthritis in it, how strong are the muscles around it, and what can we do to alleviate some of these symptoms? What is the education we can provide you to let you continue to do the things you want to do with less pain? Bursitis, kind of a hot topic term when it comes to the hip. A lot of patients will come in that have hip pain and say, I think I have bursitis, which is termed for inflammation of the bursa. So your trochanteric bursitis lies at your lateral hip joint, right at your greater trochanter, which is the most lateral aspect of the hip that we would palpate in physical therapy. So if this area becomes inflamed, or as you can see, the glute muscle um, wraps around that area, if that muscle becomes tight, or weak, all of this can put pressure onto this bursa and kind of make it feel inflamed. It's a little bit with the osteoarthritis, but you're going to see more of a peak incidence of this in that 40 to 60 year old age range population. Also responds well to PT. The area that you're going to feel most discomfort is right at the lateral part of your hip. So if you lay on your side in your bed and you feel like the outside part of your hip is really sore or it feels kind of bruised, you may be dealing with some trochanteric bursitis. And that's where in physical therapy, we could rule in, rule out different diagnoses based on your signs and symptoms and kind of what we find in the evaluation and help better tailor your plan of care so that we can actually treat what is going on. Some surgical interventions may be needed for bursitis if it's more of a serious condition, it's failing conservative management in terms of physical therapy or anything else you may have done prior to surgery. So keep that in mind. Every patient's going to be different. Not every single person that comes in with bursitis in their hip is going to need surgery. But your physical therapist, your doctor, everybody will help direct that plan of care so that if we're noticing, hey, this isn't really responding how we think it should respond or you're actually having more pain. Then we want to start thinking about some of these other options. A labral tear. We actually have two patients in the clinic right now that are being treated for a labral tear that have not had surgery. A lot of the symptoms that they're going to feel is maybe some clicking, popping, a catching sensation. You also may feel some pain in the groin. Groin pain is a sign and symptom of a hip joint issue a lot of times. Some people may think that they've strained their groin or that their adductors are really tight. But with a physical therapy evaluation and with the knowledge that we have as physical therapists, we're going to look deeper into that hip joint and see, okay, why is that referring into your groin? And a labral tear is one of the things that can do that. If you look at this picture, a normal labrum is that little white part that kind of surrounds the perimeter of the acetabulum where your, the head of your femur is going to kind of sit in that socket. And it works as a rubber seal, if you wanted to think, or it kind of provides like a suction cup to your hip. So it provides stability. And when something happens to that labrum, it can take away that stability, make the hip feel vulnerable. And if the hip goes into a certain position or range of motion, that's where you may experience that catch or that sharp pain. Some patients, keep in mind, may have a labral tear and not have any signs or symptoms, which is what asymptomatic means. 
And they may never know. The hip may just feel a little vulnerable at times, but overall they don't have any pain and they're doing okay. So this is also where we want to evaluate on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Okay, do you have a labral tear or not based on our special tests? Do we think so? Or have you had imaging that has confirmed a labral tear? Now, if there's confirmed imaging with the labral tear, which are the patients that we have in the clinic right now, we know based on the MRI that they do have a labral tear. How are we going to tailor their physical therapy? We're going to start, we want to try to introduce some range of motion. We don't want to increase their pain, but we want to start providing some more stability to the hip because we know we can't fix that labrum. So keep that in mind is that surgery is not always the answer or the first thing we want to jump to, but may be needed. So this is what I was talking about earlier with that femoral nerve that comes from your L2, 3, and 4, which is kind of getting into your mid to lower back. This is the area that innervates your hip. So if you look in the picture, you can see those little yellow lines that are coming out from your spine. Those are the nerves and kind of where they travel and go through the pelvis and into the hip. This area of the back, the joints and nerves, could be contributing to some of your hip pain. So on a physical therapy evaluation, not only are we going to look at the hip because that's where you're feeling pain, but we're going to assess the mobility and the strength, the muscle tension and guarding throughout your lower lumbar spine to see if there's something that we may be missing. Because if we just treat the hip and we don't look at the low back, we may be missing part of the picture of why your hip is actually hurting. You could feel symptoms such as numbness and tingling or radiating pain. And radiating pain just means that the pain is kind of like shooting down. Like it may be, feel like it originates in one area and then it may start shooting down into your butt muscle, down the lateral part of your leg, or even into your hamstring. With more severe cases, we may see some sciatic symptoms, which start transversing and traveling down the whole entire leg. So all things we want to look about and keep in mind when somebody comes in with hip pain. Trigger points in the muscles are tight spots that we would find upon palpation, or you may have even found yourself if you were pushing around into your hip and you were like, oh my goodness, that feels terrible, or that is really tight. That is what we would consider a trigger point. And trigger points can also be very problematic to the hip, and even into the low back. So when you're thinking about trigger points and we start palpating, there may be pain at the area where the knot is, but when you push that knot, there may be pain that radiates or travels into another area. That's what these pictures are going to show. So the muscle that's highlighted right here on the left-hand side is your piriformis muscle. So you can see the little X's are where the trigger point may be. But in the picture with the red dots, and then as the red dots get smaller, that may be area that the pain may travel to. So the piriformis may be the problem, but you may also feel symptoms down your hamstring or all in your butt muscle. And we'll go through a couple of different muscles in these next slides to give you a better idea of some of the pain you may be feeling may just be coming from muscles. We talked about the piriformis, the glute max, that is your big butt muscle. The butt muscle that we work on when somebody talks about they want to grow their butt muscles or they want to do more squats and they want their butt to be stronger. That's your glute max. It's going to be the most obvious butt muscle. But when you look at this picture, it can cause pain in a lot of different areas. So when we start palpating and feeling things, or even based on what you're telling us in your physical therapy evaluation, you may be experiencing some tailbone pain. And as you can see from these pictures, that could just be coming from your glute max. Your glute med and your glute min are two other butt muscles we don't normally think about, but as physical therapists, we're targeting these and we're looking at these a lot as their primary stabilizers of your hip. These muscles can also cause pain, as you can see in the pictures. The darker red areas is where it's more common, but then you see those lighter pink areas where it might start spreading out a little bit. So you may be experiencing some lateral hip pain but then you're like, well, I don't know, my tailbone hurts too. And even into my calf muscle down the whole side of my leg. And people start thinking crazy things are going on and that they're going to need hip surgery. But then we start working on these muscles and we start seeing some of these referred pain patterns. And then we educate you on that. You know, we think this is coming from these tight muscles. As we loosen these up, as we continue to assess and treat all of these things, we're wanting to see 
that referred pain patterns start to get smaller. And then the pain starts to localize, maybe just in the, the spot that we push on. Another thing that we want to think about is your posture. A lot of people might not think about posture in terms of hip pain. They think about posture in terms of their neck or their shoulder or even their upper back. But when we think about posture for the hip, we're thinking about the lumbar spine and your pelvis. How do these two areas work together? Can you move your lower back separate from your pelvis or can you move your pelvis separate from your lower back? Or is everything so tight that it's moving all together and we're starting to run into some issues? Some things that we want to think about when we think about posture with hip, what is your job? Do you sit a lot? Do you have to do a lot of bending and lifting? What kind of position are you in throughout the day, which may be contributing to certain muscles being tighter than others, certain muscles being constantly stretched? So we're trying to find that balance between all of that. Distribution of weight. So if you are struggling with some weight issues or if you have more weight into your abdomen, that is going to pull your pelvis forward, which is going to then place certain muscles in the front of your hip on certain tension. It's going to kind of shorten those muscles and then it's going to pull on your lower back. Or do you carry more weight into your hip area? All things that are on a physical therapy assessment that we're going to kind of address and talk about and just try to educate you on, okay, we, we believe this is why this is happening. What are you doing for exercise? How can we get you feeling better? And then last but definitely not least is core strength. So that's going to play into all of these things play together. So if you sit all day for your job, you're not having to use your core that much unless you're going to sit on one of the stability balls and kind of like work on your core while you're working. Also distribution of weight. So if there's a lot of weight in your abdomen, it's going to be really hard to keep the core engaged throughout the day because you have this counterbalance that's pulling you forward. So with core strength, we want to assess can you get into a neutral pelvis position? Can you hold that pelvic position in varying positions, such as lying down on your back with your knees bent up, sitting, standing, walking? And those are all things that we can assess within physical therapy. Another thing I want to throw out there is if we have some patients with some ongoing hip, kind of low back pain, and we think a lot is coming from the pelvic region, we may refer you to see a pelvic health therapist if we can't get it to clear up as well as we think, or we can't get things to stabilize as well as they should be, and you're still experiencing symptoms, one of our specialized pelvic health therapists can actually look deeper into those pelvic floor muscles and maybe figure out why we're having a hard time getting the pelvis and the core to stabilize or move independently of each other. So keep that in mind if you come to physical therapy, you may not just work with an orthopedic therapist, but you may work with a pelvic health specialist to kind of tie your whole program together and get you functioning with less pain, maybe even better than what you were when you weren't hurt. We all kind of go through a paradigm of like, what do I do about my pain? Do I ignore it? Do I start taking pain medications? So things that may happen with hip pain is if you really start to ignore it, you might start limiting how much you actually use your hip. And you think, well, what do I actually use my hip for? Where your hip is going to help you with all types of things, such as walking, hiking, running, going up and down stairs, demands a lot from the hip. Or even your sleeping positions, like we talked about earlier, you might not be able to sleep on your side anymore because your hip is really hurting. So then you transition to sleeping on your back, and that's comfortable for a while. And then you got to start changing out of that position, and you kind of run into this problem of, like, I just can't get comfortable. Some other things that you may notice is, kind of stepping up into your car if you have a higher vehicle like a Jeep that may start to feel weak or painful. We all want to talk about these things during physical therapy. Maybe go take a look at your car, take a look at your work setup so that you don't ignore your pain. If you're coming into physical therapy, you've already passed this point. You may have ignored it for a while, but now you're ready to do something about it. So then we run into the issue of Okay, I'm ready to do something about it, but I'm not really sure what the proper thing is. I've tried cortisone injections, which definitely may be helpful in reducing the inflammation. But as we've talked about with other parts of the body, it doesn't get to the root of the problem. So it may be helpful if you come into physical therapy and everything is really, really inflamed. 
that you get a cortisone injection and it allows us to kind of start working through getting some more range of motion with less pain and getting down to the deeper root of the problem so that you don't run into this, oh, now I'm going to go get another cortisone injection in three months. And then three months after that, I'm going to get another one. Pain medications definitely can be helpful, but we don't want any of our patients or anyone to become dependent on that to function. Ice and heat, depending on what's going on, one may feel better than the other. And a TENS unit is something that a lot of our patients will ask us about that can help with modulating pain. But the best thing you could probably do for your hip pain is try to change it. So what does that mean? Does that mean you just go to your doctor and say, I need hip surgery? Or what are the questions that you want to ask? So the main thing that I want to impose upon you or get you to be an advocate for yourself or your physical therapist to be an advocate for you is asking your doctor about physical therapy. Is this an option? Will this help me? And trying to get into the cycle of, well, I'm not going to wait until it gets really, really bad to go get it treated. I'm having some minor symptoms. Maybe I'll check in with a physical therapist and see if they can help me stay out of this cycle of tons of steroid injections, a lot of pain medication, and getting to the point where you can't do the things that you really enjoy. The positives of physical therapy, minimal side effects, maybe some soreness in the muscles, lower cost. So surgery is going to be really expensive up front, but if you can do some physical therapy to offset that and to not have to go through surgery, definitely the route of action that you would want to do. I don't know many people that desire to go have hip surgery unless it's absolutely needed. And then the other thing you want to think about in physical therapy is you're going to get a specialized treatment plan if you come to Cornerstone. Not all physical therapy clinics are going to function like that. You may have been to some in the past where everybody does the same exact thing for hip pain. At Cornerstone, we want to do an evaluation that's specific to you. We want to find out what we need to work on to get you back to doing the things that you want to do. And that's going to look different than the other person that may be experiencing hip pain. So the other thing that you think about, well, what am I going to do in physical therapy when I come? So as I just talked about, we're going to do an individualized assessment of you. We want to see how you move. What are you having trouble with? Is it sleep? Is it exercise? Is it getting out and going for a jog? Is it something like squatting down to pick up your little dog or your kid? Those are all things that are important, especially as the weather's getting nicer and more people might be out doing gardening. So don't think about what you want to do as any less or more important than what somebody else wants to do. We want to be able to help you get back to doing the things that you enjoy. The things that we're going to do in physical therapy is joint mobilizations, which are looking at your actual hip joint, your lower back, like we talked about, even maybe looking down into the knee and into the ankle, because all of that is going to play into your mechanics of your hip and your whole lower body. Soft tissue work, such as deep tissue massage, maybe some instrument assisted massage. Some of our therapists may do cupping and dry needling, if you've heard about that is going to get into those trigger points that we talked about in those pictures. We might be able to get deeper into that, right into that localized area. You might feel some of that referred pain, but that's going to help speed up the process and get things to start feeling looser quicker. We're also going to do exercises. So not every patient is going to have the same types of exercises, the same sets, the same reps. Everything's going to be based on what can you do at the time you come in? How can we progress you appropriately? We want to look at exercises that are going to strengthen your core and your back along with your hip. And then based on your individual assessment, if we have some muscles that are really tight or a joint that's really limited, that may look like you're doing some strengthening stuff, but you're also doing some mobility and stretching. And then we'll give you some of these things to work on at home so that when you return to physical therapy, we're able to progress you appropriately and we're able to continue with your plan of care. We're going to look at your posture. Like we talked about before, we want to see what position are you holding yourself in during the day? And does that change from when you're sitting to standing to walking? And you might, some people will laugh and they'll say, well, good grief, you're going to have to teach me how to walk again because I just don't know what I'm doing. And we kind of joke about it, but in a way we will. We're going to try to teach you how to hold your body in a better position. Try to teach you how to hold that position as you're doing things such as squats, lunges, getting out of bed, going up and down stairs to help protect your lower back and hip. So right now you have three different options that you could do. 
As I talked about before, we are open in our South Asheville and North Asheville offices. You could come in for an evaluation and we could get rolling on what's going on with this hip and lower back and see what we can do to help you feel better. Your second option, if you don't feel comfortable coming into the clinic right now and you'd rather stay at home, you could give us a call and we could set you up with a telehealth appointment. Myself and Sonia have been doing most of the telehealth appointments, so we would talk you through some things. We would see if your insurance would pay for an evaluation, and then we could continue with your plan of care through there until you felt comfortable coming into the clinic. The last option you have is you could leave a comment in the area for this PowerPoint, or you could email Elise, and we could just send you at home some basic hip mobility, hip strengthening, core, lower back exercises to see if we can get you feeling a little bit better just with some more tailored treatment. This is my little girl, Amelie. Um, she doesn't have any hip problems currently. <laughs> She's only three, but I just thought it was a cute little picture and it kind of shows like she can get into that squat. She's in that chair. She's probably going to stand up from there and run around like a little crazy person. Um, but that's what we want everybody to be able to feel. We want y'all to be able to bend over, squat down, stand up, twist, lift, play with your grandkids without hip pain. And at Cornerstone Physical Therapy, we believe we can help you get back to functioning and enjoying life. If you have any questions at this time, we can address those. I'm just going to turn to Elise and see if we have any. She said we do not, but that is okay. If you're watching this PowerPoint later in the day, you can put a question in the comments. You can email Elise and say, hey, I'd really like some of those hip exercises. And one of our therapists can get that to you as soon as possible. Or if you want to come into the clinic, we'll be more than happy to work with you and help with you um, at this time. I hope everybody has a good day and that you've enjoyed the PowerPoint. Maybe it gave you a little bit of insight and information on what may be going on or you may be feeling. Or you just got a little anatomy lesson about the hip. Um, everybody enjoy their lunch, and I'll meet with you next week. Thanks. Bye.